I make, I'm making you. How many of you all know that you cannot move unless the Lord says that you can move? We can't move, we cannot do anything unless God says it. Morning, church. Good morning. Please join us in the responsive reading. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne, judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. All my destructions are finished forever. And you have destroyed cities. Even their memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and he shall give the judgment for the peoples in the righteousness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you 
joining as we read our theme scripture in unison. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 and 9. Thank you. You may be seated. Happy birthday to members born in February. Isaiah Powell on the 15th, Charles Taylor on the 15th, Hannah Powell on the 16th, Susan Provo on the 16th, Minister Kenneth Childs on the 18th, Adrian Hunter on the 18th, Angela Walters on the 24th, and Georgie Pettis on the 28th. Thank you, visitors. We would like to thank Turning Hearts Music Ensemble and all our visitors for worshiping, for worshiping with us today. Please come again. Black History Celebration. Our celebration of African American heritage is today. Thank you students for your performance today. After service today, everyone is invited to attend our Soul Food Potluck Luncheon. Nursing Home Outreach. We will visit Colonial Oaks Assisted Living and, Care, Living and Memory Care on today at 2 p.m. Let's go and show some love to those sick and shut in. Banquet tickets. We are in the process of selling tickets for our 25th church anniversary banquet. Please see Sister Whitlock to secure your ticket for the event. All NBC members are encouraged to attend. Ticket donations are $25. The deadline to turn in all money for the banquet is Thursday, March 1st. 25th Church Anniversary Celebration Weekend. The Church Anniversary Banquet will be Saturday, March 17th from 5 to 8 p.m. Help is needed to assist in serving food at the banquet. Please see Sister Whitlock if you are available to serve food at the banquet. Church anniversary service will be Sunday, March 18th at 10.30 a.m. And the guest speaker will be Pastor Gaston E. Smith. 2018 NBC calendars. The 2018 NBC calendars are available for pickup. Get yours today for a donation of $5. Please remember those on our prayer list. Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson, Ronald Rucker, Kevin Whitlock, Henry Franklin, Barbara Owens, Pastor M. Davis, Murray Liggins, Aretha Liggins, Harris family, Hammer family, Dorothy Love family, Bertrand and Diane Lewis, Richard family, Anita and Stanley Jackson, Brett Smith and family, Community Project, President Trump, Turning Hearts Ministries, McGee family, Paula Robertson, Clarisha Adams, John Roberts, Jamie Turner, Eric Richards, Julia Bowdy, and Cora Wood. Simple truth. Ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. Don't let what's happening around you get inside you and weigh you down. Amen. If there are any first time visitors today, may you please stand? <laughs> On behalf of the New Beginning Church, I'd like to thank you for coming to worship with us. Please remain standing as the saints come around to fellowship with you. Jesus in me.
spiritual down by the riverside. song is uh, uh, Grateful to You and I got this song from one of the teachers at my school that's here today so this song really really registered to me and so I told Miss Thomas that we're going to sing this song today and on uh, this past Friday is when the kids learned it so they didn't have a choice
much, so much meaning in that song. Hallelujah. We want the children to know that they can be whatever they want to be because of the people that have already paved the way for us to be. There is no excuse, no excuse for anybody being all that God wants them to be. At this time, we will have a speech, and our speech will come from Caleb O'Neill. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So, I know many of you watch the news, and um, you've seen the questionable decisions that our leaders, the leaders of our country, have made recently. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Wow. My question is, if you, if you could speak to them, what would you say to them about the rumors? of a war, for example. This would be my answer. First, I would like to thank the leaders of our country for being here today and listening to my thoughts, opinions, and proposals. Now we're all busy people here, so let me get started. When we look back at our great country's history, we have limited conflicts with peace treaties such as New START, which limited nuclear weapon capabilities with Russia and silent protests, including those within the civil rights movement. Thanks to these events, our country has become a better place for everyone. War. What is war? Is it a collision of threatening forces? Is it a conflict that results in chaos? Or is it a result of a disagreement between aggressive entities? Now, as a country, we have participated in many wars. You might not have considered this, but some of our motives for war have been very, very questionable. For example, the Toledo War, which was fought because in 1803, when the newly formed state of Ohio took ownership of a small sliver of land containing the town of Toledo, Michigan Territory later disputed Ohio's claim on this Toledo Strip in the 1830s, launching a heated debate that teetered on the edge of violence for several weeks. A very minuscule reason for war. What are we about to fight for now? China's dissatisfaction with the US-led regional security system and US alliance commitments to a variety of regional states that are currently feuding with the Chinese. Do we really want to get in a war with China? Now that would be an outcome that would not be so predictable. An issue that is rarely discussed or disclosed among our representatives are the highly questionable reasons for our country going to war. Less than 20% of our nation's legislative branch are veterans. Thus, the majority of our own representatives are insensitive to the men and women who endure four to 52 weeks of training before being exposed to the stress of active warfare, not included among those leaders are the thousands of veterans returning home as amputees have permanent injuries and, excuse me, and mental illnesses for the rest of their lives as a direct result of war. Now let me ask you a question. Do we want to put the lives of so many on the line for issues that can be solved so easily? As a Christian, I am bound by faith that God will peacefully and ultimately solve our problems as long as we contribute to his goal for us. And a perfect example of this is in a verse from Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples. Yes, sir. Ah. And they shall beat their swords into plows yes, and their spears into pruning knives. And nations shall not lift up sword against nations. Neither shall they learn war anymore. All right. Jesus, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, never condoned violence. Mm. As I already know, many of you are Christian and therefore believe that we should be trying 100% to come as close to the example he has set for us yeah. as yeah. possible. Yeah. 
Would Jesus declare war on a powerful ally because we might have made the wrong alliance? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Except in this case, we might be creating another enemy that we do not need. In conclusion, I hope that you, the leaders of our country, will feel the effect and let my words guide your decision in this matter now and in the future. I hope that you, I hope and pray that you will look back at the great people who have served this country before you and see that war is not necessary. I hope that you care enough about the lives of the fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, sisters, and brothers that you would be sending out to the battlefield to have lifelong injuries and mental complications for the rest of their lives. And finally, I hope that you trust in your faith and remember what the Lord has told us all. Thank you for being here today and listening to my words. Let God, God, be with you.
thank God for our youth and our young people. Hallelujah. We serve the awesome God, don't we? We serve the amazing, the awesome, the anointed God. Hallelujah. Let's thank God again for our youth and our young people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for, for what he is doing and what he has already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the anointed God. Hallelujah. The only problem with this situation is channel 2 is not here, channel 11 is not here, and channel 13 is not here. Amen. Thank God for young people who are willing to give God the glory in whatever he's doing with their lives. We thank God for them. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to give us a word. Our young people say we need a word. And Lord, we need a word. We pray, Father God, that you bless us today through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you. Let me begin by thanking those who are listening by way of live broadcast. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church 4251, Sure My Road, Houston, Texas. Thank you for being a part of our service today. I want to call your attention to First uh, Chronicles chapter 4. Verse number 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse number 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse number 10. If you don't mind, please stand for the reading of the word. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse number 10. First Chronicles in the Old Testament, the book is First Chronicles, the chapter is 4 and one verse is verse number 10. Verse number 10. When you found it, you will discover these words. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me or upon me, and that you would keep me from evil, and that I may not cause pain. So God granted him his request. God granted him what he requested. I want to talk about God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear from you. In the world in which we live in the 21st century, we find ourselves being bombarded all about us with evil. Mm -hmm. Schools are being shot up. Young people are being killed. Churches are being shot up. All ages are being killed. Older women can't reside in their own home privately mm -hmm. without somebody coming in, robbing and even raping 80-year-old women. The life that we live is one that Paul warned us about when he said to Timothy, Timothy, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. He says, Timothy, perilous times will come in such a way until men will not give in to natural affection, but they will give in to unnatural affection. Paul says to Timothy, as he says to us today, that the day will come that there will be wars and rumors of wars. All right. In diverse places, there will be earthquakes. Yes, sir. Paul says to Timothy, and I say to you this morning, we are at that moment. We are in the times where men don't really care about other men. Men will walk up, boys will walk up, girls will walk up and shoot you at point blank range for no apparent reason. Well, I just don't like her. Well, why don't you like her? I don't know. I just don't like her. It's because the devil is as a ruined lion, yes. roaming to and fro, trying to find somebody that he can devour. Yes, sir. yes we want to hear from God. Yes, we want God in the school. 
but we ushered him out of school. We excommunicated him from school. We, we moved him away from school, and, and we, we pushed him out of school. But when something wrong goes on in school, where was God in school? I want to let you know that God is still on the throne. And he's still watching over us. He's still blessing us. Even though we're going through situations, God yet sees us. In the text, we find Jabez in bad situations. Jabez was one that nobody really want to look at. You look better than Jabez. You are cooler than Jabez. You got it going on better than Jabez. Jabez, not only was he look, did he look like pain, he caused pain. Jabez suffered a bad case of, of low self-esteem. I know I'm not talking to anybody in this room, but just in case somebody on the broadcast is listening to us, Jabez suffered a bad self-esteem problem. He didn't think very much of himself. Matter of fact, all of his brothers had it really going on. But Jabez, the Bible says in verse number nine, he was more noble than all of his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez because he bored him, she bored him in pain. In other words, Jabez, when you looked at him, you saw pain. Is it, are you in a situation in your life where when folks see you, they think of pain? Are you in a situation in your life where you really, really don't have strong self-esteem? Are you at a point in your life where people are always taunting you and people are always bullying you? And see, young people, it's just not, just not young people being bullied. Grown folk are being bullied, too. When they try to ride like the Joneses, when they try to live like the Joneses, when they don't think they make enough and they don't think they give enough and they don't think they look good enough, they're being bullied, too. Jabez had a problem. My question to you today, J. Bass, what's your problem? What's your problem? I'm not talking about bunions on your toes. I'm, I'm not talking about bad breath. I'm asking deep down within you, what is your problem? What is it that stopped you from getting closer to God? What is it that stopped God from getting closer to you? You see, now we want to hear from God, but I want to let you know God wants to hear from you. J. Bass had issues, but the point is he was more noble. He was more respectful. Young people, we live in a time where respect has been thrown out of the window. Yeah, yeah. You know, young folk now can cuss old folk out just like they're their buddies. Yeah, yeah. Young folk now can tell old folk where to go just like they're their friends. But, but in my day, we respected the old folk. Yeah. We respected those who are just two years older than we were, just like we were respecting our parents. And even today, young people will tell grown folk, you gotta leave me alone, young man, before I push you down. Don't you know that you have to be respectful? The Bible even says that, that you have to make sure that you honor father and mother, that your days will be long upon the land which God has given you. The reverse is as true. If you don't respect them, your days will be cut short. Hallelujah to the land. God is looking to hear from you. God wants to hear from you. And because Jabez had problems, he wanted to hear from God, so he knew God had to hear from him first. All right. Are you with me? Yeah. If we want to hear from God, God needs to hear from us. So Jabez decided he was going to pray. This is a world-famous prayer, and it's just a few, just one verse, just a few words. Jabez called on God. Young people, as well as seniors, we got to learn to call on God. I know we got a lot of technology going on. I know we got a lot of things happening that we can do things around the world and we can do it in a split second, but you have to get back to the old path and walk therein. God is looking on us to call on him. God want us to call on him when we can't call on anybody else. But see, we're busy calling on Shaquita and Tyrone. We're busy calling on other folk when God wants you to call on him. So you're right. Don't wait till you lose your job to call on him. Call on him while you got your job. Don't wait till things get bad for you. Call on him and be a part of his life and allow him to be a part of your life yes, while sir. things are going well. Yes, 
Because God has to make, make a way out of nowhere. It's God that, that is a bridge over cover, cover water. It, it is God that is a horse pouring in the valley. It is God the one that makes a way out of nowhere for yes, us. Sir. Oh. Regardless of what goes on around you, you need to do what Jabez did. The text says, Jabez called on God. You need to call on him. You see, prayer, prayer is a dialogue where you talk to God. And God talks to you. But you know you can't hear him unless you're close to him. You can't obey him unless you're walking with him. You can't honor him unless he's a part of your everyday life. You can't wait to Sunday to read your book. You can't wait to Sunday to read your Bible. You can't wait to Sunday to, to put your church look on. You have to be about godliness every single day of your life. You have to walk with God every day. You have to trust him and walk with him. Yes, Jabez sir. called on God. He called on the God of Israel. Yes, sir. Meaning that he called on the God of a nation that has seen God move before. Yes. Our United States of, of America is a nation where God has moved before. Now it may look now like God ain't moving at all. It may look like God is letting people do whatever they want to do. The psalmist says in Psalm 73, when I looked at the unrighteous yeah, yeah. and I saw how they were living yeah. and I saw how well off they were, I became envious of them because I saw what they wrote in. I, now, let me just stop and give you a notice. You can ride in whatever you want to ride in as long as you ride with God. Yeah. But the psalmist said, I saw how they lived. I saw what they rode in. I saw what they had, and I became envious of them. I wanted to be like them. But you keep on reading the psalm, and the psalmist says to us that regardless of what happened, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what other folk are doing, and it looks like they're prospering, there will become a day where they will be cut off like grass. There will come a day where those who are not walking with God, God's going to shut them down. It's just a matter of time before God shut all the stuff down that is not glorifying him. Yeah. The psalmist says, but when I went into the church, he says, when I went into the sanctuary, he says, when I went into the synagogue, I saw the end of those who were unrighteous, and I saw the prosperity of myself. What he's saying is, hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. God has a way of blessing us if we just continue to trust him. We got to trust God. We got to walk with God. Matter of fact, right now we have no choice. Because it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter what you drive. It doesn't matter where you live. You're going to have to trust God. Because if you don't trust him, your life is going to become bitter and bitter. Just like Jabez. The Bible said God... God was called on by Jabez, and he called on the God of Israel. The God who had seen do miracles for that nation. Our nation is the most prosperous nation in the world. Regardless of what others say, you would rather live in the United States than anywhere else. Yeah. All right. We have freedom of speech. We have freedom of assembly. We have freedom to pack arms. We have freedom to say what we want to say. We have freedom to publish what we want to publish. Let me tell you, the great United States of America will always be great as long as the Lord has his hands on her. But if the Lord takes his hands off her, if the Lord takes his hand off your life, your life will be spiraling down in a hurry. Jabez prayed saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed. We need God to bless us. We need God to deliver us. Young people in school, you need God to hold you. Yeah, yeah. You need God to keep the reins of your mind. Yeah, yeah. And there are copycats springing up all over the world, all over the nation. Everybody want to be like the bad guy. Everybody want to act like the bad guy. Act. Let me just tell you, you know what you call a nerd in 10 years? You call him boss. What you call him in five years, guess what you call a nerd? Boss. Because it's the nerd that stays in there, get in there, gets his or her lesson, and go ahead and stay focused and trust God to bless them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in every classroom, there's, there's somebody that, that want to be the class clown. <laughs> Young folk, let me serve notice on you. In the church, every church. 
there's somebody that want to be the church plant. Yeah, yeah. And they're not as young as you are. And they've been being the church clown for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 70 years. Eight, mm, they've been the class clown. Because they want attention, because they want it their way. Let me tell you, when you walk with God, you won't get it your way. Yeah. When you submit to God, you want God to do it his way. Yes. For when, he, when God does it his way, he's able to bless you. So Jabez said, Lord, bless me indeed. Bless me in spite of my condition. And, and he says to him, bless me indeed in such a way, God, that I can be blessed and other folk will see me blessed. All right. The text says, uh, some, the songwriter says like this. He says that God will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. In other words, if you walk with him, if you stay with him, if you honor him, God will prepare a table in front of your haters. God will prepare, prepare a table in the front of your, your those who are snob. God has a way of blessing you while other folk are looking on. He says, bless me indeed. And this word bless means to congratulate me, to cause me to prosper, to cause me to, to, to admire God, to, to cause me to adore God. We need to be adoring God. We need to thank him for who he is. If he doesn't do what we want him to do, just thank him for who he is. Just, just praise him for who he is. Thank him because he's God. There is nothing, no other position, no other person, no other being that qualifies to be God but God. And you know the atheists say they don't believe in God. But whenever a natural disaster begins to take place, they will slip out of their mouth. Oh, my. God. It's simply because God has breathed into us his breath. God has made us who we are. And regardless of what you go through, and regardless of what life looks like, there's a void in you, and that void looks like God. You're trying to figure out why you can't have success. You're trying to figure out why you can't do what you want to do. But there's a void in you, and a new car can't fill it. A new house won't do it. More money can't feel it. Let me just share, you, share with you right now. We make six, seven, eight figures, many of you in this room. And one of these days, you're going to give me some of them. We make eight, six figures. We make, we, we make large amounts of money. But our grandparents and our great-grandparents never had a house repossessed. They never made 50 million. They never made 30 million. They never had a car being pulled away on the back of a trailer. The difference is not the money you make. The difference is the heart that you put close to God. If you have God in your heart, you can make it on pennies and still be successful. God has benefits that's out of this world. Jabez prayed, and when Jabez prayed, he said, Lord, bless me indeed. Yeah. Next thing he says, enlarge my territory. Yeah. Take me places I've never been before. Yeah. Young people, let me just share with you. There's more to life than Third Ward, Missouri City, Amen. Sunnyside. Right. There, is, there are more places to see than TSU. There are more places to go than Prairie View. Yeah. There are more places to be. There are better places to work. You want God to enlarge your territory and take you among folk that you thought you would never be around. God has a way of blessing us, and he will enlarge our territory. He will make, make life better for us if we just submit unto him. God wants to hear from you. He wants you to spend time with him. The girlfriend that never spent time with you, brother, guess what? She ain't interested in you. The spouse who never spends time with you, she shut you down. He shut you down a long time ago. God wants us to, to spend time with him. He wants to hear from us. God already knows our heart. He already knows what we're going through. He already knows how we act. But guess what? He wants to hear from us. He wants to hear from us. God 
wants to hear from us. And he wants to hear from us in the good times. He wants to hear from us in the bad times. He wants to hear from us in the so-so times. He didn't want you to just roll up when you can eat something. If I took a poll in this room and I asked any parent in this room, when do you want to hear from your child? Do you want to hear from your child just when they want something? Big Mama had it real well. She handled it real well. She said, if you don't come see me before I get sick, don't show up when I get sick. And she took it a step further. She said, when I'm stressed across the altar, you don't even have to share the tears. If, if you have no time for me now, don't have time for me then. Somebody ought to be convicted in the room right now. You ought to go home and, and tell your loved ones how much you love them. Go home and share some time with your loved ones. And see, sometimes I just run behind Sister Davis just to look in her eyes because I want to spend time. You, you got to get to a point where, where you don't want to do anything. You just, just want to spend time. You don't want to go anywhere. You just want to spend time. You have to get to a point in your life where you understand that God just want to spend some time with you. God wants to hear from you. He says, enlarge my coast. There are blessings in spending time with God. There are blessings in hearing the word of God. Thank you, young people, for reminding us that we need to hear a word from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we need to hear a word from God. If this thing is going to change, if it's going to turn around, it's going to take at least two things, at the very least, the word of God and prayer to God. God needs to hear from us, and we need to turn this thing around. The Chronicle writer says in 2 Chronicles, he says to us, if my people or called by my name, who, if they would just humble themselves, if, if they would just turn their, their wicked ways off, if they would just put aside what they want for a while, and if they would just, just pray and, and, and hear from heaven, then heaven will, they will hear from heaven. If heaven hears from you, then you can hear from heaven. Shame has declared, enlarge my territory, expand my borders. Expand my mindset. Yeah. Expand where I will go. Lord, bless everywhere I put the sole of my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere you put the sole of your feet, you want God blessing yeah. right. upon you. And you don't. You don't have to be a missionary to go to, on a missionary field. You don't. You don't have to be somebody that God has called into the ministry in order to minister. Thank you, young people. Thank you, Sister Davis. Thank you, parents, for our young people ministering to us today. It's because God in them has to come out of them, and we have to provide a forum by which God can come out of them as we put stuff in them. Because if we don't, there's no sense of us saying, oh, he did the wrong thing. Oh, I knew he wasn't no good. We have to put something in them today. So they can be sustained by God tomorrow. That's why we spend time with our young people and making sure that they know the Lord. He says, and have your hands upon me. I want God's hands upon me. Why do I want God's hands upon me? Because sometimes I can be a knucklehead. That's why I can call some of the boys in this room knuckleheads. Because you're making a knucklehead, a bonehead decision. And when God's hands upon you, God can steer you in the right direction. When God puts his hands upon you, he lays his power upon you. See, when we are born again, we are saved from sin. We don't have to endure sin. We don't have to spend our time in sin. God, keep your hands on me. The reason why we pray God keep our hand, his hands on us is simply because we don't have sense enough to keep our sin. Somebody in this room can testify right now. Before I met the Lord, he better not have tried that. <laughs> and if you get the sisters in here to let you know, they will testify and let you know. We have to get to a point in our lives where we allow God to put his hands upon us. And some of us in this room, God is still trying to put his hands upon us and we're moving and, and we're jumping and, and we don't want God's hand upon us. God, put your hand upon me. God, put your hands upon me because if you put your hands upon me, God, 
if you would just put your hands upon me, then you can keep me from evil. God wants to keep you from evil. God wants to put you. You see, you don't have to teach a child how to lie. They come here. I mean, from the moment the doctor pat them on their tooth, to, that, that cry is a lie. You don't have to teach a child how to steal. They come here taking stuff that doesn't belong to them. But you have to teach them. And if they don't learn it, you have to teach them by force. I know y'all city folk don't know what force is, but but we had meetings every time we went uptown. You know, we lived so far in the country, we only went uptown maybe once every two weeks. And whenever we went uptown, whenever we went uptown, but before we got in the car, we heard a message. If it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. Before we went in the store, if it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. Matter of fact, don't touch anything in here because nothing in here belongs to you. And then they will tell you before you go in the store, we're going to get an apple or an orange, which one you want. <laughs> and when we got a bicycle for Christmas, boy, we had made it. We had arrived. Yeah. You don't have to teach children how to do bad things, but you have to teach them how to be governed by the Spirit of God. So we have to teach them to be governed by, by God's spirit in such a way we want God to put his hands on us and he want, we want God to keep us from evil. All right. You see, because the sin nature we have loves evil. That's right. it, the sin nature, it doesn't matter how pretty you are, it doesn't matter how you shave, doesn't matter how cute your voice is, doesn't matter how your hairstyle, whether you bought it or whether you grew it from the root, it doesn't matter how good your hairstyle is. Let me just share with you God has to keep you from evil. Yes, God had somebody in this room to this week. Your supervisor tried you. Your supervisor went there with you. And you got to a point where you said, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and guess what? Sometimes here at the church, I have to just, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Says, keep your hands on me that I do not cause pain. Yeah, yeah. You see, hurt people hurt people. But it doesn't have to be that way. Right. Jabez says, God enlarge my territory. God broad my coast. God keep your hands upon me. Not only that, because I'm painting, because I'm in trouble, don't let me put other folk at jeopardy. Right. Don't let me cause other folk pain. Don't let me be an issue every time I show up. You know, when you go to a family reunion and everybody's having a good time, they playing Barbie Blue Band and they playing B.B. King and everybody's just having a good time and, and people just doing their thing and people dancing, they drinking and eating whatever they want to drink and eat. The, the, that's what you do at family reunions, right? So everybody's having a good time. Then when Uncle Bobo shows up, the good time rolls. Don't you be the one that when you show up, they say, oh, here he comes. Oh, here she come again. We were having a fun. We were having a good time. We were enjoying it until he. The Bible teaches that Jabez didn't want to cause others pain. We can't get to a point in our lives where we always call it, call it people pain. And see, young folks, the adults cause people pain by gossip, by tripping, by saying stuff. Don't you know James testified that the little bitty tongue is one thing that man hadn't tamed, tamed, but Jesus has? And the only way to tame your tongue is get involved with Jesus, to, to, to meditate on him day and night, to go to bed in meditation with him, to wake up with meditation. You got to trust Jesus for what you have. Your mindset, uh, I, I sure can get some witness in this room this morning. How many of you walk downstairs around the corner in one room or another room and then you stand in that room and say, what happened? Why did I come in here? Why did I, why did I get up? I, can I get any witnesses in the house? It's because, it's because if God doesn't keep you, you can't be kept. And you don't have to be old to one day either. And so what you do, when you get to that point, young folk, what you do, see, you spry right now. You can run a, a, a hundred yard dash and not breathe and then think about it. 
But when you're no longer spry and your mind just doesn't click in like it used to keep in, click in, you begin to know what God is really for. Yeah. So what you do when you go in that room and you can't figure out what you were with in that room to get, you go back to the other room, the room, the one you started from. And then when you go back in that room, you start looking around, and now you're trying to figure out, what was I looking at in this room when I thought about going in the last room? Any witnesses in the house? And, and, and sometimes it just doesn't come to you like that. If God doesn't keep us, we can't be kept. If, if God doesn't keep us, we can't be kept. So Jabez realized that he couldn't be kept, so he prayed to God. God wants to hear from you. And when God hears from you and your heart is turned toward him, God can bless you. The, the final part of that verse says, and God honored his request. God gave him what he asked for. God honored his request. So you have to make sure you walk with God. Make sure you stay with God. And make sure you honor God. God wants to hear from you. You ought to make sure early in the morning God hears from you. Before you get up out the bed, God ought to hear from you. See, some of us have to call on it before we get up. <laughs> oh, Lord, how is it? Because the inside of us begin to talk to the outside of us if we don't call on him. We have to get to a point in our lives where we trust God in the good times and the bad times. So when God hears from us, God can grant us our requests. Now, what I didn't say, I didn't say that God was a bellhop. I didn't say that you can order God around and tell God to do it right now, God. You have to make sure that you walk with God, and when you walk with him, spend time with him and fellowship with him, then God can bless you. In the 20th century, little raindrop or the news reporter say, it's going to rain on, every time the news reporter said, it's going to be 80 degrees on Saturday, but it's going to storm all night Saturday. Last night, preachers all over the world were praying. Lord, bless the crowd. Touch them now, Lord. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Because we know that if the forecast is rain, folk turn off their idea of going to church. And when they don't go, they don't give. And when they don't give, the air conditioning shuts off. When they don't give, the lights shut down. When they don't give, then things go wrong that we don't want to go wrong. I'm in a church one day, and the pastor walked in. It's time for him to get up and preach. He, he came in. He turned all the air conditions off. Then he turned all the lights off. We sitting in the dark. I mean, we just flat sitting in the dark. You couldn't see the person sitting next to you sitting in the dark. Then he took the microphone. And he said, well, y'all that went home for Thanksgiving last week, this is how we're going to have to have church today. As a matter of fact, turn the sound system off. We're going to have to have church. We can't afford the sound system now. What he was saying is, we have to learn to give to the Lord and have our hearts turned toward him in order for God to keep giving to us. And we are asking you to give to the God that woke you up this morning. The Lord that kept you all night long. Don't you know robbers were robbing last night? Thieves were killing and, and taking stuff last night. But God kept us in spite of us. The songwriter says it like this. All night and all day. The angels keep watching over, over me, my Lord. All night and all day, God is watching over us. He's given us a right mind. He's given us a right heart. God keeps watching over us. That's why the senior saint says it like this. I don't need anything but the Lord. The songwriter says, I got Jesus, and that's enough. It's because if I don't have Jesus and I have other stuff, it doesn't matter what I have. If I don't have Jesus, I don't have enough. But if I got Jesus, I have enough. And because he walks with us and he talks with us and he makes us who we are. But some of us just kind of live lives like God owe us something. Like God don't bless us anyhow. God wants to hear from us. He wants a relationship with us and he wants custom fellowship with us. And we have to give it to God. Jesus paid the cost for us. Over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He died on the cross for us. They laid him in a borrowed tomb just for us. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead just for us. He got up with all power in heaven and earth just for us. He got up with us on his mind. And when we get up, we ought to get up with him on, on our mind. Because Jesus got up, I can face tomorrow. 
Because Jesus lives, all fear is gone. Because Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow in such a way regardless of what happens around me. I know Jesus makes a way out of no way. The back, back home, the folk would say, he is my leaning post. He's my walking king. He, he is Jesus. That's why we have so many African Americans who have blessed our nation because they walk with God. And they blessed us. And yes, we stand on their shoulders. And because we stand on their shoulders, we ought to be grateful for what God has already done. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for who you are and for what you've done. We ask you to bless us now, Lord. Bless those whose heart has been pricked. Bless them and get to know you in a very real way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. You need Jesus to get it right for you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. If you're here and you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do so just by believing the story. That Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 of the Bible says if you just believe the story, you don't have to run around, you don't have to shout, you don't have to roll in the floor. These things you may do is left up to you and the Holy Spirit, but what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom. He died for you, and he died for me. The door is open. If you're here today and you don't have a church home, I recommend this one, where Jesus is the center of attraction. Where Jesus is the main issue. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. If you're here, if you're in between churches, or you don't have a church home, why don't you come and join church? Join the body of Christ. Be born into the body. Birds of the air have nests. Foxes have holes. Those are their home. But Jesus wants you to have a church home. The door is open. The invitation is extended. To come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We ask all our youth to come on up front, all our youth and our young people to come on up. It is, it is prayer time for our youth. It is time for our youth and our young people to, to trust God and trust Him alone. I want everybody to come on up this way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody face me. Everybody face me. Father God, we come now, Lord, blessing you and thanking you. We thank you for these young people. We thank you for their lives, their livelihood. We thank you, Father God, for blessing them in the midst of troubled waters. We thank you, Father God, that you blessed them to come to church. 
Now, Lord, we ask you to bless them in their daily going. Bless them at school, Lord. Bless them on their way to school. Bless them on their way home. Lord, bless them going in and coming out. Bless them to call on you. Lord, enlarge their territories. Bless them that they will not cause pain. Bless each of these children, Father God, to, to know that they are special in your sight. Bless them to know, Father God, that they are beautiful and wondrously made. Bless them to know that they are your workmanship made by you, God. Bless their self-esteem. Bless them, Father God, to know that through you they are special. Bless them in their academics, Father God. Bless them in their mannerisms. Bless them to be respectful children. Turn their hearts toward you in the name of Jesus. Bless them to know you, Father God. Lord, bless them to call on you in the good times and in the bad times. Anoint them for your service. Bless them to tell their classmates about Jesus. Bless them to tell their friends about Jesus. Bless them to tell their family members about Jesus. Lord, I ask you to keep their hearts. Keep them safe. Bless their lives. And Lord, we ask you to keep them and bless them to understand that you are keeping them. We thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. His clothes and sister David's and I gonna get This <laughs> about as close as we gonna get here. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Let me thank those who have been listening to us by live broadcast. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. Hallelujah. Can I help you? <laughs> 